Hello mountain bikers, welcome to Vital's Gear Show. In today's episode, we'll be bringing you the usual gear news and reviews, and we've got a ton of stuff on the menu. We'll take a good look at some fresh new pedals, shoes, riding helmets and glasses, and we've even got Trek unveiling a new downhill bike. Want to guess what that might look like? Let us know in the comments below. But to kick things off, how about a coil shock from France that features a unique mid-compression valve? Fast Suspension is a small French company that was founded in 2007, initially specializing in mountain bike suspension service and various upgrade kits for other brands, but since 2015 also a manufacturer of rear shocks. The Phoenix shock was born from the idea of combining the sensitivity and performance of a downhill coil shock with a climbing platform for enduro applications. The Phoenix also features three separate compression circuits, the classic low-speed circuit plus a unique mid-speed circuit that gives the rider external control over how the shock reacts to slightly larger hits and weight transfers. Which Fast says translates to less compromises when choosing between comfort and big hit support than with a traditional shock. The system is used by Kayaba in their motocross products, but to the best of our knowledge, Fast is the first company to deploy it for a mountain bike application. The high-speed compression circuit is valved from the factory to match the characteristics of the rider and the bike. On the rebound side, low-speed rebound damping is externally adjustable, while high-speed rebound damping is once again set from the factory. The Phoenix is built around a monotube architecture with a compressible membrane that takes up displaced oil volume and Fast's VDO piston that is said to further improve control. On the trail, we were immediately impressed with the sensitivity and support provided by the Phoenix. Our Monraker Foxy test bike doesn't have a very progressive leverage ratio curve, but Fast did an excellent job of tuning the shock to suit our requirements. We had the choice of two spring rates and we were able to settle for the lower one, despite the linear nature of the bike and our hard charging tester doing his best to put the hurt on it. Playing with the different adjusters has a notable impact on handling and we found the mid-speed circuit to have a significant effect on how the shock moves through its travel without negatively affecting the off-the-top suppleness. Set up properly, the shock creates a nicely smooth ramp-up of support and can handle all types of terrain. We rode it on trails that varied from smooth and flowy to steep and rocky and the settings we eventually settled on worked everywhere. We will continue testing and will bring you a more in-depth review on our site at some point down the line, but for now we wouldn't hesitate to recommend the Fast Phoenix to anybody looking for a high-performance enduro shock tuned to their specific bike and riding style. For even more squishy goodness, Trek has finally made their new high pivot session downhill bike public. After sneaking in a win under Charlie Harrison at the Windrock USDH National a few weeks ago, and being completely leaked all over the internet, the official details of the bike are here. Trek is sure to make us remember their diesel downhill bike also had a high pivot, so they're not just jumping on a new bandwagon. The high pivot session is alloy frame only, no carbon, comes in three different reach based sizes, R1, 2, and 3, and respectively the reach measurements are 440, 465, and 495 millimeters. The chainstay length varies across the sizes while using the same rear end. Trek just tweaks the location of the bottom bracket on the front triangles to get 439, 445, and 452 millimeter chainstay lengths on the different sizes. Trek's minnow link is present for subtle geometry tweaks, like going from a 63 to a 63.6 .6 degree head angle, but there is also a suspension progression minnow link, which provides either 20% or 25% progressivity, so you can have more pump or more plow on the session. Cable routing is also up to the owner and can be internal or external. The new session is built around and comes stock with dual 29 inch wheels, but can be run as a mullet with 27 5 inch rear wheel, or it can go dual 27 5 while still using the 29 inch wheeled fork. There's just a tall lower headset cup that's used, so all of your Franken biking for the Vital MTB bike check section only requires the swap of a wheel or two. Frame only options come with a special headset cup for a 27 5 front wheel. The complete bikes do not. It can be purchased separately, however. Frame price is $2,999 US. The Session 8 with Boxer Select and Fox Van Performance Shock is $49.99, while the Session 9 is $6,999, featuring a Boxer Ultimate and Super Deluxe Ultimate downhill shock. It's clear Trek has sorted out the versatility of this new Session, and they go big on paper too. 
answering all the uber nerd questions about wheel path, pedal kickback, and more. So hit the link in the show notes below to get your science on. We can't wait to see Reese, Charlie, Valley, and Loris on these bikes this summer at the races. And stay tuned, because we have one on the way for testing. If you've been following along over the past few months, you'll have noticed a bunch of new shoes being released recently. Well, the onslaught is not over yet, it seems, as the fresh new kicks just keep on coming. Ride Concepts is back in the news again after releasing two new evolutions of previous models, the Hellion Elite and a revised TNT. The Hellion Elite brings the stickiest rubber that Ride Concepts makes to the Hellion all-rounder platform, while the TNT gets new microfiber uppers and other small improvements. The big news for both these shoes, however, is the DST 4.0 Max Grip rubber compound used for the outsole. We have previously tested this compound with good results, but recent refinements in the manufacturing process have changed things up for the better. On the trail, we immediately noticed a higher level of grip, bringing both these new Ride Concepts shoes even closer to the current market leaders in the grip category, 510 Stealth and Specialized Slipknot ST. This version of DST 4.0 now presents a very positive and confidence-inspiring feel on the pedals, which let us really focus in on the other key design elements of these shoes. The midsoles are just the right blend of stiff and comfortable, helped along in the comfort department by the D3O inserts in the insoles. The TNT also features D3O medial protection on the inner cuff. There is plenty of protection on offer in the Hellion Elite, but if you want something truly burly for lift-assisted riding and long days out in the woods digging and riding, you'd opt for the TNT. Both shoes run true to size and should cater to a fairly wide range of foot types. The lacing offers plenty of adjustability and the plush interior makes sure that no hot spots develop. The wide strap of the TNT really tightens things down for that extra snug feel. In conclusion, we've always been very impressed by the overall quality and comfort of Ride Concepts shoes and with the improved stickiness of the DST 4.0 rubber featured on these two new models, the company is truly poised to challenge the best. You'll find a full review of the Hellion Elite on our site if you want to learn more. Staying with the shoe category, we told you the hits just keep on coming here, Specialized has just released the Rhyme, a shoe made for those who like to hike almost as much as they like to bike. The Rhyme combines classic hiking shoe aesthetics and features with a bike-specific shank and Specialized's awesome Slipknot ST sole, which here has been given deeper lugs in the toe and heel area to help with grip when hiking on rough terrain. We found the Rhyme very comfortable and fit for purpose, working just as well for hiking as it does for biking. On the ground, the compliance in the toe area helps the shoe conform to the terrain, while the incredibly grippy sole and shank combine to provide all the performance you could ask for on the pedals. The Rhyme certainly does not look like a mountain bike shoe, but it absolutely performs as one, and the added hikeability will make it a valid choice for those who like to spend as much time on two feet as they do on two wheels. Head to our site to check out our full review if you want to dig deeper. Raceface has become the lightest in class with their new Next SL Carbon Handlebar, made for XC and light trail use. They use a high-tech carbon layup to control flex that reduces rider fatigue on those stiffer XC bikes by giving compliance vertically without losing steering precision through an unwanted horizontal flex. The next SL bar is just 167 grams, and it uses a 35 mil bar clamp, 740 millimeters wide, and a 10 mil rise. Hit up raceface.com for more. What happens when Troy Lee takes the best of the A1 and the A2 and mixes it all up together? you get the new A3. When we first tried on the A1 in 2013, we were blown away by the comfort levels offered by this now iconic helmet. The A2 introduced improved airflow and a different fit in 2017, while taking a small step away from the all-out comfort focus of the A1. The A3 brings it all together, with a fit that is closer to the original A1, yet still manages to offer tons of ventilation. In terms of safety, TLD continues to push the envelope with a dual-density EPS shell and a MIPS system that is integrated with the adjustable harness. To keep sweat out of your eyes on hotter days, there's a sweat glide band that sits around the forehead. It doesn't completely eliminate the problem, but it certainly buys you some time before the floodgates open up on your face. A new three-way magnajust feature makes it easy to position the visor in the right spot for you, and it can be pushed up completely to make room for goggle storage during climbs. 
220 US dollars is among the more expensive half-shell helmets out there, but you do get a lot of features for your money, not to mention a generous helping of spares and accessories in the box. But more than anything, you get an incredibly comfortable and safe helmet. Head to our site for the in-depth review. Keeping it with helmets, Scott has just released the all-new Stego Plus. Designed for aggressive enduro riding, this half-shell helmet offers extended coverage and a new form of impact management technology that we have not come across before. Towards the front of the head, which Scott says is a particularly vulnerable area, the Stego Plus features a pair of polyurethane inserts that traverse the entire shell and which are meant to provide progressive impact absorption. Scott has also implemented one of the latest versions of MIPS, which integrates the adjustable harness. The harness can be moved up and down to accommodate your head shape, and the Stego Plus comes in three sizes covering head measurements from 51 to 61 centimeters. The visor was designed to be moved out of the way for goggle storage, and there is a large rubberized insert at the back of the helmet to provide extra grip for the goggle strap. 16 large vents provide for generous airflow. The internal comfort liner is fairly extensive, but it is easy to cut a few parts off of it if you want to further improve cooling. The Stego Plus is delivered with an extra visor that features a dedicated GoPro standard mount, which is a nice touch. The execution leaves something to be desired, however, as the design of the mount does not allow the hinge enough range of motion in the standard form. Two solutions to this problem, either run a small GoPro extender arm, or cut off a tiny plastic bridge that sits at the bottom of the hinge in the visor, and then mount the GoPro under the visor. On the trail, the Stego Plus has proven itself very comfortable and very stable in action. The size L tested here is designed for heads from 59 to 61 centimeters, but I had no problem sinking it down to fit my 58, 58 and a half centimeter head with plenty of clicks still left in the dial. Airflow is good and the helmet is very quiet on the head thanks to the latest version of MIPS, which has all but eliminated some of the creaking noises that could plague the earlier generation. The adjustability of the chin straps is also very good, and although we are generally fans of fidlock buckles, the simpler click version specced here by Scott does the job just fine. At 190 US dollars, the Stego Plus has a lot going for it, and it is certainly one to consider if innovative new safety features and comfort are high on your list of priorities. With sunny days upon us again, maybe it's time you think about refreshing your riding glasses. We've been testing a few of the latest models for you. Here's what you need to know. Ku is an Italian outfit, sister company of Cask, whose Defender helmet we have presented in previous gear shows. Recently introduced, the Demos is a performance-oriented model with a large field of vision. The lenses are made by Carl Zeiss and come in seven different tints to allow you to choose one that fits your requirements. We tested both the rose and the green tints with good results on the trail. The optical clarity is great and the frame sits very securely on the head. The width of the nose piece is adjustable to allow you to fine-tune the fit and we did not experience much fogging despite the wraparound design. Strategically placed ventilation slots no doubt help with extra airflow here. Adidas sent over the SP0005, one of the new models in their performance eyewear collection. These super light shield style glasses feature what Adidas calls their color-up lenses, made to enhance contrast and color. There is a three position adjustable nose piece and a set of nine ventilation holes on top of the frame to promote better airflow in action. On the trail, these glasses know how to make themselves forgotten thanks to a stable fit and the very low weight. The optics are good, especially in bright light where the extra contrast and color proved helpful in making out trail features. Deep in the woods, the particular lens we tested here is less appropriate and we also found it more prone to fogging up than the coup demos we covered in the previous section. <laughs> Vital has had a bunch of bike reviews go up on our site lately. Check out our thoughts on the freaky Marin Elroy Steel Hardtail, the long-legged Kona Process X, and that new $13,000 specialized Levo e-bike. We tested the new GX Access Shifting too, and you can even win the complete drivetrain valued at over $1,000. We have a fundraiser going on right now that helps the Southwest Idaho Mountain Bike Association, and there's no cost to enter. Come on, GX! Come on, GX! <laughs> if you go, make a go, donation, however, your chances to win are improved. Links are in the notes. Robots. Come on, you gotta do something, pal. Did you maybe think we were done with shoes? No, no, not so fast. We've still got the all-new Gravita range from Physique to talk to you about. The Tensor and the Verser were both designed for downhill and gravity riding and they both exist in clipless and flat pedal versions. The Tensor offers the most protection of the two models with a raised cuff that shields the inside of the ankle and heavy-duty TPU reinforcements all around the shoe. The uppers are made from ripstop fabric, which is thinner than synthetic leather for example, but still very resistant. There's a Velcro strap to allow you to really sink the shoe down around the foot. The Versor features slightly less protection and makes do without the Velcro strap and the raised ankle cuffs. 
The clipless models both feature a shank to promote better stability and power transfer. Of the two clipless models, we've mainly been testing the simpler Versa so far with excellent results. The shoe runs true to size and the general level of both comfort and control are very high. The cleat pocket is long and will allow plenty of room to run your cleats more towards the center of the shoe if you so desire, which is of course commonplace for gravity riding. The offset lacing may look a bit surprising at first, but it works well and seems to be at least as comfortable as traditional laces. The insole does lack a bit of arch support and the shoe is a bit flat in general, something to take into account if your foot type typically demands more support in this area. The flat pedal versions feature Vibram's Mega Grip rubber outsole, which provides plenty of grip when paired with a good set of pedals. The flat pedal versions lack a shank, which allows the sole to conform a bit more to the pedal. Great for grip, but it can be a bit tiring for the feet during longer days out. Other than that, both the Tensor and the Versor flat pedal versions have put in good performances out on the trail. The shoes feel light on the feet and they also handle moisture very well. We do think a shank would help add a bit of support in general, which would have been consistent with the overall design goals here, but as it stands, these two shoes are still a perfectly viable option if you are looking for a flat pedal shoe that didn't inherit its looks from a skate shoe. Oh my god, Chris. How about some new pedals to go with all those new shoes we've been talking to you about? Conveniently, DMR has recently introduced the V11, a composite version of their legendary Vault pedal. The V11 features exactly the same shape as the Vault, it is just a bit thicker in the middle to make sure there's enough material around the spindle. The body is made from glass fiber reinforced nylon and spins on a chromo axle via a combination of bushings and bearings. There are 11 pins per side with DMR's motocross pins used on the leading and trailing edges for extra grip. The pedal retails for about 60 US dollars at list price which is on par with other quality composite pedals. Spares and full rebuild kits are available as well. On the trail, it came as no surprise that the V11 performs at a very high level. The Vault won our flat pedal shootout back in 2016 and it has held on to first place ever since then. The V11 feels pretty much the same underfoot with the concave shape and the aggressive pins providing faultless grip when paired with a quality riding shoe. Benefits of the composite body include a certain amount of compliance as well as colors that won't wear off in addition to the lower price of course. Definitely worth considering for your next pedal purchase regardless of how or where you ride. Alright then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.